Rising above and beyond the crossbar, a prime example of the power of national and cultural pride, discipline, and determination. The life story of soccer coach Lincoln Phillips from Trinidad and Tobago, up next on Carib Nation. Hello, welcome to Carib Nation. I'm Doris Dean. My guest today is Lincoln Phillips, a soccer coach who has made his name around Washington and internationally. And we're going to talk about his life story today in his new book titled Above and Beyond the Crossbar. Welcome to Carib Nation, Lincoln. Thank you very much. Uh, there is this uh, real pleasure and I say hi to all my uh, Caribbean neighbors. Yes, thank you. Uh, this is quite an interesting story, uh, not only about your life history, but about soccer mm -hmm. and about Howard University. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not sure where to start, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to talk a little bit first about where you came from, mm -hmm. the fact that mm -hmm. you became the soccer coach at Howard, not having gone to Howard, mm -hmm. uh, having come to this country as a young man with your family. T tell us where you grew up, what led you to soccer, and then what led you here? Yeah. Well, it, it's a very interesting story. Uh, it, so many uh, so many journeys uh, I've been through. I met so many great people. Uh, so many great people came into my life. And so many, and I, I, on the other hand, I, I came into a lot of other people's lives. And, and uh, I came from Trinidad, Port of Spain, Trinidad. And, um, you know, humble beginnings, you know, we were not, not poor, but, but mm. we were broke, you know, mm. <laughs> but poor is, is permanent, you know, right. broke is temporary. And um, uh, in our neighborhood, you know, we have, we play sports all the time. We have yeah. little kids so in the, where we lived the and we play, so the, the sports are broken up into seasons. Football, which is soccer season, uh, basketball and, and cricket. And uh, if, if during soccer season you, you kind of play soccer, well, then you're a social outcast mm. because, wow. you know, nobody, you, you can't play with, any, with, uh, with anybody else. So we had to be very good at all the sports. Mm -hmm. And uh, that served me quite well as I grew up. I, I was not very good at soccer uh, in, in everything. And uh, later on, I started working hard because I couldn't stand being, you know, being the worst um, in the area. On the outside, And yeah. it, de it developed from there, that, that uh, work ethic. Mm -hmm. I don't know where I got it from, but I just didn't like the idea of being last all the time, being the last to get chosen. And I worked on my own, and when I get to about you know, 15 or 16, just all hell broke loose. I was wow. just, you know, doing well in everything. And um, that was how I managed to get into, into soccer and into the national scene. What were your parents like? Did mm. they have a specific goal for you? Mm. Um, and, and what was their mantra to you? <laughs> well, you know, we, uh, I grew up with my mom. Mm -hmm. And in the old days in, in Trinidad, um, having uh, uh, families with uh, three different people, three different women was, was vogue, so to speak. <laughs> and my dad had uh, 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 kids with three, you know, mm -hmm. three different uh, ladies. And uh, strange enough, you know, the, all of them g got along quite well. Mm. And um, at that time in the community, the, the community shared a lot. Yeah. And uh, my father was, um, although he came home, you know, twice a week, you know, mm. it, it, was, it was special, he was very strict. And uh, he, was my, he was my mentor. And my mom was my, um, she was a champion. Mm. You know, she, she really kept the ball rolling and she worked two, three jobs. Um, in the night, and um, I don't think that they they had any aspirations for me. They just 
made sure that I was a good kid, mm -hmm. that I was honest, and the, you know the things that I do, the, you know, make sure that I was you know very responsible and and so on. So I grew up in that type of environment. Yeah. Fast forward mm -hmm. to coming to Washington. Mm -hmm. You came, you got married, of course, had your children. In Trinidad, yeah. and, and came to Washington. What made you want to come to Washington? Well, um, I was in the Army at the time, mm -hmm. doing very well. I was uh, the, uh, not regimental, but um, the physical education uh, uh, non-warrant officer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was uh, scheduled to, to get promoted to, um, to, to an officer. And, um, I got selected for the national team, and we went to, Pan to the Pan Am Games. Ah. Now, you know, we played in the Pan Am Games, and we shocked the world. We beat Colombia five to three. We beat um, Little uh, Trinidad. Yeah, <laughs> and then we, we we tied with Mexico one to one. That was that was, that was amazing. And the biggest feat of all, we beat Argentina one to nothing. Mm. And so. The, the North American Soccer League uh, uh, just started here in America in 1967, and uh, they were looking for players. I see. You know, and uh, as a result from there, I, I got a scholarship, not a scholarship, but uh, a contract mm -hmm. with the Baltimore Bays. And uh, that was in 1968, and that started everything. I see, yes. I see. So that is then how you got to replace a legendary coach at Howard. <laughs> right, um, that's another story in itself. Yeah. I, I played one year for the Baltimore Bays, and then the league folded, and I went to another team in Washington. Mm -hmm. I became the player coach. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a lot of fanfare in the Jet Magazine, you know, the first black to coach a professional team and all of that stuff. And it didn't, that, that was, didn't mean a whole lot to me, you know, coming from where I came from. Mm -hmm. But afterwards, I understood. And um, I coached the Washington Darts, and we won. We had a great team, and I brought in a lot, several players from Trinidad. We had from Africa, and we, we, we played very well. Mm -hmm. And one day I was doing a clinic. I always loved to do clinics mm -hmm. uh, with the uh, Special Olympics. And an old man, Mr. Chambers, mm -hmm. who was coach of the Howard team at the time, this is what he told me. He, he was going to his car, and, and he heard a noise like something exciting was happening. Mm. And um, what was happening, I was, I was jumping and heading the ball and doing all sorts of things with my, my players and myself. And, um, and he just decided, foot halfway in the car, decided to come back out. Mm. And that was my angel. He, wow. he was an angel that was sent to me. He came back and he saw me and when we were finished, he said, uh, young man, where did you learn to head a ball like that? So well, I am from Trinidad. He said, oh, you the one that's coaching the darts? And I said, yes. So can you come to Howard and do a clinic for me? Sure. Went to do the clinic. The players liked me. And, um, and uh, he said, well, would you like to coach Howard? And I'm saying, would you like what? to coach Howard? <laughs> you know? And I was, I was in school at the time. I had about 32 credits from Bowie State. And they, I, tr I got the... I the Credits were transferred, mm -hmm. and now I'm, I was not, was not a good student. I left Trinidad with one GC pass, but I aspired, mm -hmm. you know, to be to get a um, physical education degree. And here I am at Howard University, wow. coaching the team and in class with some of my players. Oh, wow! You know, and, and that was a humbling experience. I can imagine. And, and what was even more humbling was that um, they were A students, mm. and I was just hanging on to my fingernails with a, with a C minus, you know? Wow. But um, it, 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 it was a humbling experience, but it was a good learning experience because as a, as a, a professional player, I was much better than all of them, mm. you know? And then, I, of, co of course, I was married, and they, they looked up to me as their, their mentor and mm -hmm. so on, and they helped me on the bus sometimes with my, with my Spanish and things like that. So. It was a great experience. Wow. Yeah. Now you led Howard then mm -hmm. to uh, uh, history. Mm -hmm. Talk about 1971 and what happened after that, between 1971 and 1974. Well, uh, it started in 1970, mm -hmm. okay, when I came on board. Um, we were, were looked at as, as, as upstarts. Mm -hmm. You know, we just came out of nowhere you know, 
And at that time in college soccer, if you, if you organize the play, players, we always had good players, but they weren't really organized. And um, once you organize them properly, they'll win games. And so we won and went into the uh, NCAA playoffs. Mm -hmm. And we lost to, to Cinder, uh, no, we lost to UCLA. Mm -hmm. And coming back in the bus, we were, we were traveling up from the airport. Um, one of the players said, you know something? We're better than those players. And that was Rick Gallery Arthur. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he Rick. said, um, I am coming back next year specifically to win that championship. Mm. Somebody said, Rick, you, you know, you have seven, um, seven credits to, to graduate. He said, no, I'm going to take other credits. And then I'm going to take those seven credits in the <laughs> fall. And that was his statement. Oh, and wow. the, the irony there the, uh, is that when the fall came around or the, the, the summer, he got sick. Oh. Uh, so wow. badly that he couldn't stand up. My so he goodness. had a problem with his balance and so on. I went to the hospital to see him. I said, well, you know, giving him a little um, pep talk and so on. He said, well, I said, the doctor say you can't play soccer. He said, don't mind, don't mind the doctor. The doctor <laughs> don't know what he's saying. <laughs> he said, the doctor's stupid. I come back. To play to win his championship, and when his season started, the, the preseason started, he came by, and I, I knew that he you know, he couldn't play, mm. and he just looked on. The next day we came to practice, he was in his clothes, and uh, he's running, and then that was it. Wow! I mean, he played right through, and was one of the outstanding players mm. on the team, and uh, so we 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 won the championship, and. Um, the following year, we, we went to Jamaica. We got better players, and and then the NCAA came down on us. They said we had that, that 120 infractions. I don't know where they got them from, wow. but uh, they they said we had professional players, which we which we didn't. Now and that was also, uh, as I read this story, mm -hmm. um, the fact that most of your players at Howard were foreigners mm -hmm. from either the Caribbean or Africa. Right. Um, but when you looked at it, there were also foreigners in some of the white teams, and it, be, it became an issue of race. Well, yes, you know, um, we, we uh, you know, you have to look at the times. You know, mm. times have changed, and my views are different now. Um, uh, but at the, at the time, we had uh, Maryland University won the championship. They, they had a lot of players from Iran and Iraq and all those places. Um, uh, San Francisco had a lot of Scandinavian players and so on. And uh, so it, 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 it became a problem. What, what happened, some of the coaches got jealous. Some of the local yeah, coaches sure. were very jealous uh, that we came and... Uh, came out and of nowhere. Out of nowhere. And so they started, you know, inquiring and crying. If you, if you look deep enough, the NCAA rules, uh, uh, especially at that time, were so vague, mm. you're going to find something. I see. And so they found, you know, that one at about three players or four players did not take the SAT, mm. which was a requirement. But at Howard University, we, the, the best students who, who get an advanced standing in their, their high school certificate, they're your doctors, they're your lawyers. Yeah, most of them came out of very high GCE exactly, standards. Exactly. Yeah. And um, so Howard University, knowing this, mm. you know, it was their policy not to let yes, them do the SAT yeah. because Except an SAT is that. just to determine where, where you should fit. And they know exactly. that these guys, when they come in with an A, with an a level, mm -hmm. they get 32 credits of advanced. Course. Of course. Okay? Mm -hmm. But they didn't take it. So that's, that's the law. Mm. So that's the one thing that, uh, and, and, the fall, and the following year they changed it. Mm. Okay? Um, the, the next one was one or two of players were uh, over age, according to the NCAA rules. And they stated every, any player who turns 19, okay? After that 19th birthday, if he, he loses one year of eligibility, hmm. okay? So if a player comes to Howard University at, at uh, 20, 19, 20, he only has two years of eligibility. And um, one of our players was over, hmm. okay? And strange enough, the following year, the court struck it down we hmm. took them to court, and they said it was discriminatory, and, and, and it was changed 
and it was it was up to 21, I think. Wow. So it was unfortunate, and uh, having the background that I have, I, you know, a lot of folks were call, talking about injustice and this, that, and I wasn't thinking about injustice. I'm thinking about I'm coming back at you. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm mad. Okay, you took my cookie away from me, and I'm, and I'm coming, coming back, back to get it. it. Yeah. Okay? And you did. And I did. So, and we sent it in 1973, we were on probation. We couldn't not go to the championship. And uh, it was a difficult year. And in 74, I, we, we brought in some beautiful players from, from Africa. And um, we had a slogan mm. Truth crushed the earth shall rise again. Yes. By yeah. Emerson. And uh, we, we rallied behind that, and we, uh, you know, we, we won every single game. Not a That's tie, it. not a loss. And that is still, is still a record. That record is still intact. No university has equaled that record up to this day. 14 years later. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yes. Well, that's quite a, a legacy to, to have behind you. Uh, I'd like to also talk a little bit about where did you... As you said, you, you developed that to the struggle. But you obviously have a gift of communicating with your players, um, reaching them, and, and bringing them along. Mm -hmm. What would you say is, is your key? <laughs> well, I learned about that about four or five days ago. Hmm. A friend, you know, uh, the Howard soccer team had different nationalities. Mm, right. And when I coached the Washington Dats, uh, we had different uh, nationalities, British and all that sort of mm -hmm. thing. And um, I, a friend of mine, Dave Phillips, and because I was struggling what I would say at, at, at the launching of my book, you know, because I can't write speeches, I have to say things from my, from my heart. Mm -hmm. And he, he read the book and he was very impressed with the book. And he said a few things jumped out at him. Mm -hmm. He said, Lincoln, you were successful because of, uh, uh, and he mentioned cultural intent. That's what I want. That's exactly what, why I asked that question. You know, because I think, mm -hmm. and this is something mm -hmm. that I've been saying, I believe that that cultural intelligence, that deep culture, that, mm -hmm. that strength of deep culture, parlays into your determination, your grace, and everything else, it, and, and I really want to get that message across because we, yeah. part of what this program is about is to shed, shed light mm. on the successes of our people and what it is behind that success, mm. what it is that brings out the best in our people. And I'm very glad to hear that. Well, you know, it, 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 you know and it's only five days ago. Yes. You know? And um, I started going back because it, it just didn't happen because when, I, when we win championships and I gain success and so on, that is just the end of the race, mm -hmm. okay? Right. What has happened at the beginning where of the race? Where did it start, exactly? Okay, where the roots and so on. How did that happen? And I started thinking. And growing up in St. James, I had some great experiences. Um, my, 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 I, I lived around the place where there, 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 was, where there were Chinese, there were Indians, and, and the Indians in particular, uh, there was a lot of division. Mm. And I played with them a lot, you know, they, like a community center. And I remember one instance, my, my father did not like Indians at all. He, I mean, he hated them. And I was playing and, uh, on, on one of the teams, you mm. know, and with, with some big men, and they, they, they liked me and so on. And uh, I brought a picture home one day to show him. And he looked at the picture and, you know, he wasn't pleased. Mm. He said, but you're the only Negro here. You're the only black here. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong with this picture. Mm. And I'm looking at it and I'm saying, what? I, I said, but, but Dad, they're my friends. Yeah. I said, I like them. And they like me. And I, I mean, I was 14 or 15 and, you know, I was, I was crying. And... My mom gave him one of those, <laughs> those looks, you know, <laughs> as if to say, come on, man, you've got to be real. Yeah. And then later on, you know, well, that was it. I was finished playing with the team. Mm -hmm. Later on, he said, um, you know, uh, when is, what time is the game? So he, I came, he came to he see came the game. He came around, yeah. And I did well, and the guys hugged me and so on. And years later, he told me, he said, he said, you know something, remember that day? 
He said, you taught me a lesson. Uh -huh. You know, it doesn't matter. Then I had, I had situations with Chinese, okay? I was, when I was young, my mom worked um, uh, as, a, as a maid in uh, some English people's place. Uh, and I used to stay in, in, at the savannah nearby uh, the whole day and she would come out and give me a sandwich and mm -hmm. go back. And Mrs. Seeger got to find out that she was doing that and she was livid. Oh, wow. She told no, he has to stay here. And I remember the day when, when, when she, with all her blue eyes, and she hugged me. She hugged me just like my mom. Mm. You know, and it, it felt good. You know, so, so you know, l looking, going back over my life, you know, the white, the Indians, you know, everybody to me were the same. I, I just judge people by, 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 by who they are. Who they are. You know, yeah. and, and it, oh, it's only because of this guy, uh, David Phillips, mentioned this cultural uh, mm. uh, intelligence that I said, okay. So when I came up to the United States, the Washington Dads, you know, little Trinidad, I'm the coach, and we have English players who look down at you yeah, as, you know, mm. but I knew the game. I knew the game. Mm. And whenever they challenged me, I would put them to sit down. I say, okay, let, let's talk the game. I wouldn't get mad because they called me this or that. You take it no, personal, no, no. yeah. No, let's sit down, let's talk about the game because I knew that I was smarter than them. I knew I knew about the game, and so I took it there. And then when we came to Howard, wow! <laughs> you know, we have the, the black foreigners now. Yes, you have the, you have the, 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 the Trinidadians, but the Trinidadians make a lot of jokes and they're, they're happy go lucky and so on. Jamaicans, you know, yeah, that's a different breed, man. Mm. They, 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 they're warriors. Yes. They make it by nature, a warrior, yes. right? And um, then the Nigerians, I mean, they are warriors. Two yes, and yeah. when, when they clash, oh, oh my God! <laughs> so I had to do a lot of, you know, massaging and yeah. talking to this one, and, and then eventually I realized that all of them want to win the championship the so badly. So fortunately, I had that. So I said, look, we, we just have to, you know, take away some of the things that you like and so on if we want to win the Work championship. Together. So I think that my my growing up in in, in Trinidad, you see, I. I always say that I was made in Trinidad and assembled in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> and so I have the best of both worlds. Yes, I have yes, great yes. upbringing. Mm -hmm. You know, my grandfather was from Barbados, good Barbados stock. Mm -hmm. And um, my mom from St. James and Trinidad. And, and uh, then I came up here and met a lot of good people. Yeah. You know, the Lord yeah. sent me a, a lot of good people, especially coach, people like Coach Chambers, yes. who brought me to Howard. and. I struggled in class, I struggled, and Dr. Anderson, and you know, you had so many people just came in and just, just, just helped you just, just wanted to help me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was very fortunate. Well, I, I went, as they say, when you exude mm -hmm. the right mm -hmm. vibe, mm -hmm. it comes back to you. So, well, uh, and a lot yeah. of that comes, as I said, from understanding the cohesiveness of that culture. Mm -hmm. the, the, as we say, um, the eclectic, uh, ethnics, ethnicities mm -hmm. of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. When you look at the Caribbean, I mean, it's, right. it's, it's all mixed up. Yes, and yes. so we have no choice but to be yes. as one. For the last five minutes, we have four or five minutes about soccer in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Are soccer players professional level? What is it that soccer players have to do or teams have to do in the mm -hmm. Caribbean? to get them to the level, as you mm -hmm. said, mm -hmm. you competed against Argentina, Colombia. Mm -hmm. Are we still there? Are we there yet? Are we there again? Can we get there? And how, mm -hmm. what do we have to do mm -hmm. to get to the Germany, Argentina, mm -hmm. Brazil level? Well, things have changed. Uh, 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 when, when I was a little boy, okay, we had our heroes. Mm -hmm. We'd see a player playing and we'd go back home and we were that player. Uh, one of the teams, um, uh, I hated that team. And, and, but they had a player called the Black Panther. Mm. And he was all dressed in black. And to me, a 10-year-old kid, it was like a ferocious animal in a cage, <laughs> shaking the cage. And wow. I just liked the Black Panther. And uh, the first, the first uh, team I played for, I, my mother, I needed to get black, you know? So she get, got <laughs> one of the flower bag, you know? And she boiled it, uh -huh. so all the writing well, came out. Oh, and goodness. then she dyed it. Wow. And I had on a pair of black socks, and I was just, I was the panther. 
<laughs> you know, and the first, uh, uh, the first half of the game, the rain started falling. And my, oh. I was not all black, I was black and white. <laughs> but the, 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 the point I'm making is we, we, had, we, we had, had those heroes. Yeah. Okay? Uh, now that money has come into the game, uh -huh. as soon as the player plays well, they want to ship him overseas. Mm. So the players, the players don't have any, they, they don't have any idols so, and so on. Yes, yes, and that, yes. is, that is very, very difficult. And um, we, the, the administration mm. now is, um, is, is looking after themselves, mm -hmm. okay? They have to lead, have to, in the Caribbean, we have to understand the importance of, of, of servant leadership. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. we we get out there. When I say leaders, I'm talking about politicians. I'm talking about right. I'm talking about teachers. I'm talking about parents. Any situation, any position of power, mm -hmm. we in the Caribbean do not understand the power, the principle of power. Mm -hmm. You get power, and all of a sudden you just you go crazy. It's a different yeah. person. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And uh, so we need to handle power. We we need to Gently. to help people mm -hmm. develop. And uh, if, if, we, if we can do that, you know, uh, our kids need a lot of mentors. Yeah. Because yeah. so many of them are born, you know, without a father in the house. Mm -hmm. So the sport itself, you know, disciplines you. I was just Because say, you yeah. have to follow rules. rules. And if you break a rule, you get, you get punished. A sideline, yeah, yeah? whatever, and yeah. That, and that type of thing is built inside you. But, you know, now... It's, it, the administrators are looking after themselves and so on, and, and they're not really doing a good job with the development mm -hmm. of, of the kids. And recently, I, they developed an, a non-destructible ball. A, a car can pass over the ball mm -hmm. when it comes up. And uh, the lady, Mrs. Sandra Cress, uh, from One World Football, mm -hmm. got together with me and uh, make a long story short, you know, I was able to take back 15 thousand balls to Trinidad. Wow. And we, my son is down there now in the, um, as uh, general secretary. Uh -huh. And the first thing we do is to distribute the balls into all Down the areas. School. If you have some yeah. poor areas where they have a lot of crime, you know, you see kids playing and you'd have 16, 17 of them with one soccer ball. Yeah. Now every one of them has a soccer ball. Wow. You Fantastic. See? So we, our, our administrators have got to understand the power of sport, sport, what sport what and can culture do. could do, and yeah. if we if we improve in those areas, I think you, you're gonna you're gonna get a you better a, a better person, a better people. Okay, well, great to end on that point. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you so much. The book again, Rising Above and Beyond the Crossbar, a life story of Lincoln uh, Tiger Phillips. I forgot to ask you how you got the name Tiger, but I don't <laughs> think we have time for that. But um, we'll, I'm sure that you were as ferocious as a tiger, well, that it, panther it, outfit. But it emerged from, yeah. from the panther, the panther uh, yeah, after the stripes and so on, they started calling me Tiger. <laughs> well, thank you so much. It's been a great pleasure, pleasure talking with you, and best of luck with the book. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us in Carib Nation. Until next time, remember our motto is one people, one culture, one Caribbean, one nation. I'm Darius Dean.